Can you guys hear me? Okay. I'm back again with another, wait, there it is. Back again with another reversing uh, topic. And this time it's about Android. So, uh, yeah. Before we even talk about definitions, uh, let's, uh, I'll talk about what really happened that got me interested in this. So uh, at, at, be, at the beginning of May, when all this corona, corona uh, things started, um, a bunch of te uh, a new application called It's Me was getting popular for some reason. And um, people were saying that when you install it on your phone, it goes through all your contacts and sends a message to them, forcing them to download the app. And I was like, that's an that's a interesting uh, way of uh, trying to get people to download your app. So, and I was like, okay, that looks weird. Maybe I should uh, look into it. But uh, it was for uh, iOS, so I was like, okay, I guess I don't have to do this because I, I didn't have a, an iOS device at that time. But um, something, something happened. Apparently, it appeared on the Google Play Store, so I downloaded it, and uh, that's what inspired me to do this research. Okay, now we talk about some quick definitions um, about Android and things that are important to it. So first is APK. That's the Android package, manage, uh, package file format that's used by the Android operating system. It's a way to share um, applications from one device to another. So like your apps, they are usually APKs on Android. Um, activities, those are the, the screens you see. So every time you go on your phone, the first screen you see, that's an activity. It's a single for, uh, thing that the user can do. So just one screen on your phone. And that's the emulator. That is to simulate like an Android device. You can think of this like a, like a VM for Android or just for any uh, operating um, and mobile operating system. And that's the JDX uh, GUI. That's a DEX to Java dip compilers. And that takes a, a Java, um, Java, Java C whatever, I don't know what it's called, and converts that to the approximate um, Java equivalent and makes, makes it readable for, for wherever it's trying to reverse it. And there's the uh, Android manifest. That is a file in the APK used to tell a, a, a phone or a device what um, permissions you, uh, you need on, for that um, application and uh, what, how many activities you have on that application. So with that, we can talk about some reversing tools. This should actually be on the last one. We're going to come back to this, actually. So it begins, I got a text message saying, hey, two of my friends have downloaded this app, and uh, we want you to also try it. As you can see right there, the link points to, to the Apple Store. So I, had, I was so confused why I got this. But I decided to go to the uh, Google Play Store and just see if it's there. And voila, it's there on the Play Store um, at the time, which is around May 12th. Um, then, I, then the first thing you do for Android uh, reversing is you can pop this into the J, uh, JDX GUI, which, are, like I said, takes an APK and the, uh, takes the, the DEX code and converts it to a Java, uh, to Java readable code. And as you can see, this is an example of the, a manifest. And this was the manifest of the It's Me application. And uh, first thing we see is that we have about seven. We have about seven um, activities in this applications. And they're both named um, It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's the main activity. Uh, this line at the bottom, what this tells the phone is that every time I turn off, uh, like start the application, I want you to run this, this uh, activity, which is it's one. So every time you launch the application, that's, that line tells you to run this application first, uh, this activity first. Then uh, when you do, this is what it looks like. It shows you this walk through kind of a like in, interesting kind of UI. It's saying, oh, click next to go to the next uh, um, screen. So 
that's the first one. Then when you click next, you get to that other one, which is this kind of nice looking um, activity with the colors. I actually enjoyed the color scheme. But um, first thing we noticed, well, first thing I noticed was that the install button has is not even spelled right. So at first, when I took this, I was like, OK, this might not be a legit application just with the first spelling mistake. So if you're trying to uh, scam people, at least learn how to spell. Um, so what do you do? Uh, obviously, I, all of this was being run on my emula emulator because I didn't, want, I didn't know exactly what this did. So I had to be safe with this. So we need to find that ver verification code to get to the next step or whatever step is next after. And doing that, we found, well, I found two different ways to get it. First, we can actually just follow the instructions, which is this, this button right here. Or we can pop that into, we can just read some juicy Java code, right? Because we love Java so much. Um, so let's do the first step, for, uh, the first step. So we click on the get verification code, and it takes us to this website called move at uh, movesup.org. And it's if you remember like those uh, websites, like when you go, it leads you to another website saying, oh, you need to uh, verify this application to get this amount of coin for your for this for this other application. Like it requires you to download multiple APKs, well, download other apps just to get us one just just one special item on the other apps that's the same thing that happens here so um, you get to this website you enter whatever username didn't really matter and uh, the next step is you have to download an application called free fire mobile obviously I was not going to download that that the name was just not interesting so I just ignore that in Every time you click on the star, it keeps going back to the same website. So you're just stuck in this loop. So this was a, dent, a dead end. So um, we go to the next step, reading some code. When you, uh, so depending on how the developer does this, you can either have code that's readable like this, or you can have a obfuscated code where it's just like, instead of the words, you can you see like letters just, like this would be A, and this would be A dot B, A dot C, and stuff like that. So it's harder to, to reverse if it's obfuscated. But in this case, it's not, so we can easily just read the code. And right away, and going back to the image, remember when there were two buttons? If you click on the one on the right, which says the install with the misspelled word, you, this is the code that gets executed. And as you can see, it's comparing uh, the input, whatever you entered, and verifying uh, if, it's, if it's the valid, um, the valid code. So it has a counter. You, I believe you have five. You have five times to try your um, whatever verification code you have. Then if it's not, then it just says, oh, you have no attempts left, and you pretty much close the app, open it back up, and it's refresh, it refresh all the, the, the counter, the attempts, the number of attempts you have. So first of all, we have the ver verification code. Um, if you put that into the, uh, into the code, it, get, it tells us to go to this website, which is uh, or like a, a small URL pointing to a Google Drive somewhere. So that's that. If you did not click that, it, there's another URL, which is at the bottom. This is the same as the website we saw before. It takes you to this website. So we have two URL. We know where one goes to. It's the one we have already been to. And the other one is to download another APK. So I guess we're going down a rabbit hole. Yay, more APKs. So I installed it on the emulator but nothing showed up. And at sub, when, uh, when you install an application and it does not show any, any, like any, uh, any icons or anything, that's a red flag, first of all. It's most likely uh, a spyware or something because 
most it's required, not required, but it's for any like social media apps, it's always good to have your icon displayed so people can use it. But this just magically disappeared and that was that. And next thing I did was pass it into the JV, JVX GUI again. And the first thing I noticed, which is I always go to the manifest first, which again tells you all the permissions and all pretty much all the important configs for the application. And the first thing we can see is the package name. It's prank.example.si.ourprank, our prank dot whatever. So another, and if, uh, another hint that this is not a legit application. It's just a prank. So we go through that and we, there's nothing really interesting except in every single ac activity that you go to, so every single screen you get to go, it's just gonna load on had from, it's using this um, class called, uh, what's the name? Request new enter. In, uh, this class, which is used for getting um, um, advertisement on your phone. So every time you have like, Remember, you know how those games where you play for a while, then in for like, uh, like 10 seconds, you get this advertisement on like saying you have to click the X to continue. So this is what this code is doing. It's just the, the same, uh, it's just that. And it has this for every single page on this application. So it's, it's, it's pretty much just trying to steal money from you. Well, it's not stealing money from you. It's just using your phone to get money for the developer. And okay, since, there was, since that's all the application does, I decided to go to the review and see what's, what all this is about. And you can see there's two different reviews. Someone gave it a, a one star, another person gave it five star. But overall, everyone is saying that the application has a lot of hats at the beginning. And in order to even get to that point, there's a lot of steps to get there, which runs for about 30 seconds. So this is, Terrible. So, um, and also on Twitter, people were going crazy. This is where I first um, noticed this. People were complaining about this It's Me app that goes through your text messages and all that stuff and texts everyone. And I, I was like, uh, again, this is weird. It's not supposed to because Android has permissions. And if you do download the app, you're pretty much accepting those permissions. But I decided to double check on that and look at the permissions list that each application have. And um, just to catch up, we, we have two applications, two applications at this point. We have the original one, which is the it's me that APK. And, the, and we have this other one, the second link at the bottom, actually the, the first link, which leads to another public drive which, which is another APK. So that's the two APKs we have. The second one is called the tap vir type tap virus vir or something like that. So this is the first application and it has nothing much in the, in the, um, in the manifest file. It has access network uh, state and internet and wake lock. So, what the first one does, the access network state, that's just going to uh, t help the application tell if you're either connected to the Wi-Fi or you're not, just checking your network status, nothing crazy. The second one is used to access the internet. So every time the application has to do some, maybe some sockets, trying to connect to a web server or anything, it needs this permissions to be, uh, to it needs this permission to, in order to do that. And obviously we know it does use this uh, permissions because we had, if we click on one of the buttons, we get, um, we get redirected to another website. So that's that. The wake lock just, I, it's weird that this application needs that, but it's a way to tell if your phone is either, if it's in use or not. So that's what this application is, uh, that permission is for. And there's nothing really sketchy in this one. But if we go to the um, tap virus.apk, this is the second one. 
And as you can see, there's a lot, a lot. And this application is just sending hats every, like literally every five seconds on your phone, but it has all these permissions for no reason. And it never even uses all of it. It never uses any of this. And again, and uh, some of these permissions are considered bad according to the um, Android um, developer page. For example, receive boot completion. That's able to tell when your phone fin uh, reboots or not. Um, what else? It reads settings. It, obviously, it reads your settings. It can write to your settings. It could, uh, what else? What other crazy stuff do they have? It has your network stuff and just, okay. It has all of this. The, the most dangerous one would be the boot complete because not not every application needs that, except you have to do like maybe uh, if your application is has to do with like um, like uh, virus defenders stuff like that for like in, uh, the phone, you will probably need that because you need to make sure you set up yourself first so you know that to like scan the other application and, and decide if it's it's a virus or not or a malware or not. So maybe, but in this case, you do not need this. This is a lot of permissions they do not need. And with that, I just decided that this is fake. It doesn't need to be out there. So I tweeted, I wrote a, a blog post about this and I posted it on Twitter and it was like three days after, after double checking that I was sure with what I found. Then I believe few, the next day, the actual company, I didn't know they were a company. I just thought it was just a, just a random person deciding to make a, an Android app. And they decided to text me saying that, can I send them a link to the, to the, to the um, Android version of the application? And I said, sure, there it is. And apparently they did not make that. They only have the application for iOS, which would make sense because, because at the beginning, the link says, oh, go download this app on the Apple Store, not on the Play Store. So we went, we did some talking and at the end, they were able to take down the link and it's, it's down. So it's not on the Play Store anymore. So sometimes it's good to tweet about what you do. Sometimes, not all the time. Um, but before I finish, uh, finish up, um, yeah, so that's this with the, that's what my, that's what my research was about this this at the beginning of May. And going back to the list of reversing tools, um, there are multiple tools you can use in this step. There's, you can remember from last week when I said there was the static analysis and the dynamic um, analysis. In this case, I decided to just do only static because I just wanted to test it and Dynamic is sort of, uh, it's not, I, I was not at that level at the point. So all I did was just read some code. But we have, I used the JDX GUI, which obviously gives you the GUI version. But you can also have just the C CLI, which will just output the, the decoded resources to a file. And that's all it does. It, takes the APK and decompile it and puts, it, and puts all the resources into a, file, a folder, a file, whatever. But the GUI just, after doing that, it just shows you all of it in a beautiful, not beautiful, but like in a nice way to just see the code, just like as you code in, in any IDE, pretty much. Um, there's the MobSF, which is a, a automate, automated all-in-one mobile application pen testing malware analysis and security assessment framework. This is really useful. I would suggest everyone to give it a try. All you have to do is just plug in your APK. So uh, it plug in your APK and it does all I just did in an instance. But this doesn't only work for um, Android. It works for um, both Android, iOS, and Windows apps. So it's just not one platform, it's cross-platform. So really useful. Um, APK tools, which is sort of similar to JDK, just decodes you pass in like APK-D and the, uh, the APK name, and it just does the same thing. It takes the, 
the APK and just converts it to a, a file, a list of files and folders of what of the source code of what it thinks it would be the source code. And, and there's Frida, which is used for dynamic analysis. It works like, like, kind of like a client server mo model where you, the, the phone, wherever phone you have the application installed, that would be your um, server. And on your OSI machine, you have a client where you can connect to it. And the main goal with this is you can inject commands or you can inject into the um, running processes on that on that um, device. So that's one way to do some dynamic um, analysis. You can use Frida, and also Frida is cross-platform. You can use this with iOS and all that fun stuff. Um, I believe that is it. I did not have my blog post linked in this, but it's out there somewhere. If you go to Emmanuel with the name spelled wrong, that GitHub that IO, you would see the, the blog post there too. Um, yeah, does anyone have any questions? On Twitch, I cannot tell. Let me check Twitch for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, man. Go take your midterm, man. <laughs> Sadly.